Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It's Marissa Explains It All. So today I am showing you how I do this little strip of color in my hair that some people have kind of commented on or noticed. Um, it's sometimes called a funky strip or a peekaboo strip or other names, but I love it. I just think it's this cute little piece of like pop of color um, that just, you know, shows some individuality and just something fun. I actually started this about maybe 12, 13 years ago. Um, I used to work in a hair salon ages ago and they they were doing this drive for uh, breast cancer awareness and they um, were letting people dye a strip of their hair pink um, to show support for breast cancer and then all the proceeds from that sale went to the Susan G. Komen Breast Cancer Foundation. So I thought that was super cool and I was like, yeah, I'm all in. And so I started out with this strip being pink um, and then once it faded out, I was like, I, what other colors can I do? And so I started doing it myself at home um, and I had done, you know, blue and teal and purple and just kind of some other colors that kind of blend well together like that. So, if you're interested in learning how to do this too, then stay tuned. All right, so let's get into it. So, first things first, if you have blonde hair or really light hair, then you are fortunate. You can skip the bleach step and you can just put the color right in your hair. For those of us like myself, who are extremely dark um, and have dark, dark brown hair, um, I do need to lighten it first. And so I'll just kind of show you a little bit about uh, my frizzy hair today. I really didn't style it or anything. I just kind of made sure it was dry because I don't think the product will stick to uh, wet hair. So make sure it's dry. Um, and as you can see, I haven't done this in quite a long time because my regrowth is pretty crazy uh, and when I did this last time it was actually like a teal color and then it uh, has lightened out and then you can see that it's kind of faded away from the roots a little bit and so there's a little bit of the blonde from where I lightened it and the rest of this is just a faded teal and the rest of my roots are just dark brown and need to be lightened so I know it's not healthy for hair to be bleached over and over and so I don't usually like to bleach the same section of hair twice I will have to do it a little bit because I am trying to go to a maroon color um, so I'll just lighten it a tiny bit but I don't want to leave it on for too long um, because it will damage the hair and make it feel like straw but this top portion here will need to be lightened the full way um, and you have to be really careful with bleach I mean you guys have seen the horror stories and seen like the terrible YouTube uh, videos of people whose like hair fell out because they left it on too long or it just feels brittle and gross and has a lot of breakage and so I'm really careful to not leave it on too long um, just enough to get to like that lighter blonde stage where the color um, can kind of show through. So in terms of the products that I use, I always go to Sally Beauty Supply and buy a Beyond the Zone bleach kit. And I'll pop a picture on the screen here for you guys to see what it looks like as a kit. Um, but I have a couple pieces of the kit because I don't need too much of it at one time. And so I often have a lot left over. And so I have um, broken into my Radical Bleach Kit powder, which looks like this, and it's already opened. And then um, you use it with a, a 40 volume developer. So it comes with a little liquid and uh, it also comes with like a nice little brush which is awesome for if I can find it um, just mixing everything together and applying it to the hair and when it comes to doing the color part I do love the ion brand um, I use color brilliance brights and it looks like this this is just a very used tube but um, this is a semi-permanent cream hair color and I you have used this teal a lot it does start out very bright and then it fades out to whatever this is <laughs> whatever kind of gross sea foamy color this is um, so we need to cover this up um, so I have, I have used that in the past, but this time I wanted to try something a little bit different. So I know how this performs, um, but today I am trying a Chi brand Ionic um, permanent hair color. And this is supposed to be ammonia free and a little bit more green. And I got this at Sally Bead Supply as well. So I'm going to try this out. And this one actually does need to be mixed um, with a developer. So usually with this um, Ion Color Brilliance brand, I just take it right out of the tube and I just put it in my hair and a little strip of hair and it dyes it no problem. Um, but with this um, Chi Ionic brand, you do have to mix it with a developer. So I just picked up a 20 volume developer and I'll follow the directions on how to um, mix those so that the color goes on correctly and we'll apply it together. So let's do it. First thing you gotta do is to identify the strip that you want to dye. So for me, that's easy because I already have a strip that's dyed and you have to kind of separate it out from the rest of the hair and tie the rest of your hair up on the other side. And we're gonna make a nice, like sweet little 90s ponytail. So let's do that. So I'm gonna go ahead and just 
get all this together and make sure that I'm not missing any brown uh, pieces in here. Um, just kind of separate everything out and I'll be right back. So I'm back here with my beautiful 90s side ponytail, rocking it. Yes, I wore these too. So I've sectioned out all the hair and I'm just trying to make sure that none of the blue pieces ended up on this side and none of the brown pieces end up here. And it is time for me to start by bleaching this regrowth or the roots. So I'm going to start with mixing the bleach and then we will apply it. I've got all my supplies laid out here. So I've got my Radical Bleach Kit powder and the 40 volume developer, a little bowl to mix it in, the little brush that comes with it that I can use to stir, and then a couple pairs of gloves. Definitely want to protect your hands. And I got two pairs, one for the color and one for the bleach. So I'll set the color ones aside for now. I've also got set aside here uh, the Reynolds Wrap, just a little aluminum foil strip for when I actually apply it to my hair. Let's go ahead and take our Radical Bleach Kit Powder. And this one's of course already open because I've been using it. And you can get a few uses out of this, which is great. It's super cost effective. Oop, knocked the bottle over. And then just pour, uh, I'm just gonna pour whatever I have left in here. Uh, I don't need a whole lot because I'm really only bleaching the roots. And so I don't need the whole package or anything close to it. So I, I've gotten maybe three or four uses out of the package. And then the instructions don't give exact measurements. It just says to mix the developer in until it's a creamy consistency. And so I'm not really measuring anything here. I'll start with just pouring some in and mixing it around until it looks like a nice creamy consistency. I think this will do for now. So we will um, go ahead and go with this. I'm just gonna go ahead and put my gloves on and then we will get to work. So sometimes I'll actually start without the foil and just um, make sure it doesn't touch my neck. but. Just start to apply the bleach evenly um, and just try to brush it all in there. And I'll just be dipping down into my little pot. So excuse me as I look down. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and apply it just to kind of show you guys what I do. pretty saturated at this point um, and the bleach is really pungent so don't be afraid to use eye protection <laughs> when you wear this it comes kind of stings a little bit sometimes especially if you're working so close to your eyes um, and so again I'm trying just to make sure it's not getting on my neck but that everything is pretty saturated it kind of should look like wet hair when you're done and usually what I will do is I will make sure that it is really worked in there with my gloves. So I will get in there and make sure that it is just all saturated. You really don't want like to miss strands of hair. <laughs> Go ahead and grab my foil again and put it up here. And then usually just kind of fold the hair up. Um, I will take one side in and the other side in, fold in the sides like a little burrito and then fold one up. And then you can also just fold under to, to kind of keep it away from your um, neck if you wanted to do that. So it just kind of sticks out like this little foil packet. So now that that is all in there, I will let it process. And usually I do only 10 minutes at a time because I really don't want um, to over process the hair and make it um, brittle and damaged and possibly fall out. So nobody wants that. So uh, I'll leave this for about 10 minutes. I will set a timer and then I will be right back. All right, it's been 10 minutes. So let's see what we're working with now. So as you unfold it, just kind of take a look at the roots and you can see that uh, it's really, not lightened enough yet it is just sort of like a lighter brown color at this point and so it looks like it just needs a little bit more processing to go so i'm going to set the timer for another 10 minutes stuff all my hair back in this little foil pouch fold everything back up and then we'll continue to wait and check another 10 minutes okay it's been another 10 minutes so let's see how our process is going already it looks a little bit lighter so it's been now a total of 20 minutes and it's looking pretty good. Um, it is still a nice warm blonde. It's not really like a super light. Um, I think I'm gonna leave it on for 10 more minutes and then we'll see how that looks. All right, so it's been another 10 minutes. Let's see how it is looking. I probably don't wanna leave it on too much longer than this. This has been a total combined time of 30 minutes left on. And I think this is probably blonde enough for what I'd like to do. So it's looking pretty good. 
The next step is to go ahead and rinse this out, um, including just a shampoo. I don't condition it, I just do a shampoo on it to make sure all the bleach is out. And then I will come, um, go ahead and blow dry that so that the strip is dry again, and then I'll be right back. So it's all dry now, and as you can see, it's like a nice little blonde color, and then of course the blue, which is fine, like a lighter, lighter kind of teal color or mint color. Um, I'm okay with this. I mean, the, the maroon's gonna cover it and I'm fine with it. Um, I didn't wanna stress the hair anymore by lightening it any further than I did. I'm just kind of afraid of that breakage. So <clears throat> if you wanted to go lighter, you could. You could certainly, you know, lighten out that um, color that's there, but I just don't wanna do that. So. It looks a little crazy now, but now it's time to go ahead and mix our color and apply it. So here we are again at the mixing station and I've got my color here. I'll go ahead and open this up. Um, it usually comes sealed with like a little bit of a foil piece on top. And if you flip your cap over, you'll see that little spiky end is what you use to pierce it with. So once you kind of press firmly and pierce it, um, then the color will come out. So that is that. Um, and then I've got my developer and I've got another bowl, this time a glass bowl uh, because of plastic bowl will stain with the dye so I do want to use glass this time um, and then I just got a food scale so I can measure out the right uh, amounts and then of course my gloves and um, my new piece of foil and then a brush for applying so this is a three ounce um, tube and this is a 3.6 ounce and so they're not going to be one-to-one -one. and in fact I'm not going to use the whole tube I can get a couple uses out of this and so what I want to do is I just want to put in a, a one and a half ounces of this which is half and then one and a half ounces of this um, I don't exactly know how much that is you can estimate or guess but I have brought like a food scale with me just to make sure it's accurate so first I'm going to measure out the right amount Amount of the developer and then I will go ahead and put in the um, color because the color does have a little guide on the side where I can you know kind of make sure I'm squeezing out the right amount and so I do have this set to fluid ounces and I'm just looking to make sure that I measure out um, one and a half which I actually have gone a little bit over kind of a uh, snuck up on me fast there but that's okay I'll put in a little bit more here to compensate so then one and a half ounces of this um, just start squeezing from the end here and it doesn't look uh, like the color quite yet that you would expect um, the color on the box does say that it is a extra light red violet plus this is the color that I'm kind of going for um, so we'll see how that looks and so I'm just going to go down and keep squeezing until I get to a little bit past the one and a half mark. So we shall see how this goes. All right, a little bit past. That looks like the right amount. So I'm going to cap it. Um, and we have ourselves a little mixture. And then I'll go ahead and mix this up and see how this starts looking. It is looking like a nice, like a pinkish kind of flamingo-y color. I'm hoping this will deepen up um, as it gets on the hair, um, you know, to like that red color that's on the box. But this is a new color to me, so we'll see how it goes. I'm adventurous. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and put on my gloves and um, start applying it. Okay, I've switched rooms so I can go ahead and have my desk candy um, so I apply this because this one is a little bit more messy. I'm going to go ahead and draw, place my foil here and use one hand to keep the foil in place and the other hand to place the red. And so let's see how this goes. I'm just going to kind of make sure that it uh, applies evenly and then I think I probably will go back through with my gloves and make sure that every strand is coated. Uh, but for now, I'm just looking to make sure that I get like a basic coat on there. Alright, so now that I've got like a nice basic layer on, I'm just going to take this away and very carefully kind of lean over and um, use my hands to grab some of the product. I really do like to use my hands for this. It is messy. Make sure that you're protecting your work surface wherever you are because this dye will stain countertops and um, anything else that it comes in contact with. This is going to be probably more than I need. I probably could have split this into maybe three or four applications, but just wanted to make sure I mixed enough here. So if you're doing this at home, you can actually split this bottle probably into fourths um, if you wanted to get a few uses. And it's okay if you get a little bit on your neck. Make sure you kind of wipe it off pretty quickly after you're done. Um, I might even stand up just a little bit here so you can kind of see how I am applying the rest of this to the long, long, long hair that I have. <laughs> 
Um, and so I'm trying to just make sure I get plenty on there and really code it pretty well. And then I'm going to also kind of run my fingers through because I've done this before where I have only coded the outside and not gotten like really in, in here, you know, in the strands. And so I'm going to go ahead and do that. This feels pretty saturated to me. So I am going to go ahead and twist it up. Um, and just to kind of make it a little bit easier to put in the foil, twist it all up and I will put it in my little foil. One handedly, I'm going to try to just do this. Um, I'm going to kind of get some on the outside on accident. I'm trying not to get it everywhere. Um, just kind of try to be careful when you're doing this because it will stain everything. And usually I'll put a second piece of foil on. It's really handy if you have a friend that can kind of help you with this. It's just um, kind of difficult to do on your own. So I'm taking a second piece of foil to place over it, especially because I have such long hair, um, to make sure it's really all encapsulated, 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 <laughs> captured in the foil and so that it doesn't transfer to anything else. You really don't want this touching anything. So I'm going to make myself a nice little foil piece there and I'm going to wash my hands and then I'm going to let this sit for about 30 to 45 minutes. I'm not worried about how long this is staying on my hair. I was worried about the bleach because I didn't want it to lighten too much and cause breakage, um, but color does not cause damage. Color doesn't usually damage your hair. So it's okay if this just sits out um, for as long as you want and the longer you let it sit, usually the more vibrant it is. And so I'm going to go clean this off my neck real quick before it gets too far and then I will be uh, back in about 30, 45 minutes to check the color. And while while I wait for this to process, I am actually going to put a black towel across my neck um, just to make sure that none of the dye transfers on to anything else. Um, I've done a kind of a good job of trying to make sure that it doesn't, you know, leave the foil, but sometimes it does. So we don't want it to get on anything else or uh, my, my neck. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Now, if you do get dye on your work surface or your sink or your skin or anything like that, acetone will take it off. I mean, it's not good for your skin to put acetone on, but it does work. I and mean, it does take, um, you know, the dye off of of your surfaces but try to catch them quickly it's always best to get it right when it's on there um, I did catch this you know pretty quickly maybe within like a minute of it being on and so it doesn't um, it hasn't dyed my neck which is good so that just keep that in mind all right I'll see y'all in a bit. All right, I am back after having washed it out and uh, blow dried and styled it. So I'm holding up my pillow so I can show you guys kind of the big reveal. And ta-da! Oh, it's so pretty. I love how it turned out. It is a vibrant red and it, in the ends where it um, had sort of the blue tint to it, it almost looks like like more of a burgundy color, like a wine color. It shows up really vibrant on camera and it shows up maybe a little bit more muted in person. It's not so bold, um, but I do really like it a lot. Um, it turned out really pretty. It really stuck well to uh, the roots, to the blonde section that we had dyed. I actually think I might've missed a little blue spot, but that's okay. Um, so yeah, it really held well and grabbed um, so you can kind of see where it fades from where it was a really bright blonde um, into more of the blue area where it's kind of just a little bit more of a, a different hue to it. I just think it's so cute and I love how it turned out a little um, burgundy curls. So I'm super happy with that. Um, if you have questions, let me know. Otherwise, I think I'm hoping this will last a long time. I usually like to do this every six to eight months and this is a permanent color so it should last a long time so hopefully it does and um, we shall see as you watch more of my videos you'll see how it fades out and how it wears and then um, I'll put a different color on next time I'm gonna go ahead and link all of the products that I use today down in the description box below so feel free to check those out and I really am impressed with how this Chi brand worked um, but I also do like the ion color brilliance so I think you can't go wrong with either one um, so if you like this video please hit the like button and be sure to subscribe to my channel and I will see you guys next time thank you bye Ooh, my hair is so frizzy today. Tell you what, I've got my saran wrap. Saran wrap. Lost my foil there. <laughs> it's on my face now. Super. Okay.